Bruce Muffson, Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another series of videos. Today, we're going to be discussing PTSD. I want to first go over an article that I saw in a newspaper and clarify something to our audience to kind of give you understanding again of just how severe, how pervasive, and how ongoing PTSD actually is. This came from a uh, writer was Caroline Covington from Kaiser Health, Kaiser Health News. Here's the story. Lauren Walls had lived with panic attacks, nightmares, and flashbacks for years. 26-year-old San Antonio teacher sought help from a variety of mental health professionals, including spending five years and at least $20,000 with one therapist who used a Christian faith-based approach, viewing her condition as part of a spiritual weakness that could be conquered. Okay, oddly enough, things got worse. In her search for help, Walls encountered a psychiatrist who diagnosed her with PTSD. As a result, she sought out treatment with someone who had experience in it, and she experienced a world of relief. It was just like a world of difference. That's the real quote. Here's the thing. Her psychologist explained that she likely developed the mental disorder from years of childhood abuse, neglect, and poverty. Now, here's what the article kind of veers off a little bit. PTSD has long been associated with members of the military who have gone through combat and with first responders who may face trauma in their work. Is also associated with survivors of sexual assault, car accidents, and natural disasters. You can also find you can develop in adults who experience chronic childhood trauma from physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. And Walls is fortunate enough to find a therapist trained to therapist trained to treat PTSD. Okay. Uh, reality check. It's not just the military. It's not just first responders. From my thousands of encounters with patients over the last 20 plus years, PTSD is woefully underdiagnosed. Instead, it becomes bipolar, antisocial, conduct disorder. No one really understands why the person is acting this way. It's real simple. They're dealing with the trauma in their life that's been unresolved. This woman had a childhood that she explained that she had a rough, rough childhood, years of childhood abuse, neglect, and poverty. From the hundreds of kids, hundreds, thousands of kids that I've assessed, it is a diagnosis that is underdefined. People use everything else but that. When you live in trauma, you live in fear, you live in agony, you live in suffering, it's going to affect you emotionally, mentally, clinically. What annoyed me, not annoyed me in the article was that she went to a psychiatrist and then a psychologist. She didn't go to an LCSW like myself because I would have said to her doing what's called a psychosocial, tell me about your background, tell me about your history. She would have said to me those three main things, abuse, poverty, neglect, ding, 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 bingo. That is PTSD. That's what I would have put down. So for our audience, one more time, and when we discussed this before, and I'll continue to discuss this again. Some of the symptoms of PTSD are intrusive memories, recurrent, unwanted, distressing memories, reliving the traumatic event as if it was happening again. Those are called flashbacks. Trying to avoid thinking. We're talking about the traumatic event. <clears throat> That's called the avoidance aspect. Avoiding places, people, activities that remind you of the traumatic event. Negative thinking in your th negative thinking changes in your thinking and mood. Negative thoughts about yourself, hopelessness about the future, hard problems making keeping close relationships, lack of interest in things you used to enjoy, difficulty experiencing positive emotions, changes in physical and emotional reactions, being easily startled or frightened, always being on guard for danger, trouble sleeping, trouble concentrating, irritability. These are all signs of PTSD. And for kids six and under, reenacting the traumatic event were frightening dreams that may or not include aspects of the traumatic event. They say 3 million people in America have PTSD symptoms a year. I think that is incredibly underdiagnosed. I think it's far, far higher. I think so many people live with PTSD but have no clue what it is and are unsure how to explain it that they live in hidden fear. And what happens? Drug and alcohol abuse, self-destructive behavior like overeating, uh, cutting on yourself, all coming from PTSD. So please be aware of it. It's not just for the military or first responders. It can affect anyone from dealing with a variety of issues that are traumatic that lead to PTSD type behavior. Thank you.